Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to read you a passage. It's a somewhat long passage, but indulge me with you will. Um, I was reading a uh, thread on Metafilter, and I can't remember the title of the thread, but it, it's discussing some of the situations that are going on with the red caps in America. And someone who wrote, and this is, this is as in quotes, because this is the comment they made in the passage I'm going to read as a, as, as, as a follow-up. It says, um, it's not that they feel left out. It's that they view America as a white Christian ethnostate under siege from others, and everything flows from that. Rural white people are the single most overrepresented group in America, and that would be a truism. All righty, so this is the comment I'm going to read uh, in reply to that. This. White people have long been used, uh, used to having social hegemony over society. You were the poorest, shittiest white person. At least you had the cold comfort that you were still better than any black person. The problem for them today is that the large swaths of Americans have basically cast them Cast that aside, at least on a surface level. There's no doubt that systematic racism permeates the entire American nation from top to bottom, but at least more people are rejecting the notion that they're better just because they are white. And that scares the fucking shit out of a segment of white America. They've long been insulated from their own failings. Racism has a it was like a security blanket and a shield that they could use, uh, use to fall back on. Without it, what do they have? Nothing. They're just like every other sucker in this godforsaken country walking the tightrope without a net. And that fear turns into anger at everything, at rage at everything um, they took with that social academy away from them. Progressivism, multiculturalism, scientific pro progress, all of them are valid targets, and the end result is that you get a segment of the population who, when they can't get regressive policies, will just act out of spite. This whole anti-vax dying to own the libs, my freedoms, uh, spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B-S, is, uh, is, is them looking to recapture just a bit of that unquestioned control over society that white people once automatically had. If nothing else, they're going to fuck over as many people as possible with whatever little sliver of power they have so that their liberals, so that those liberals will have to um, come crawling, begging for them to stop. Now, this for me really sums up a lot of the problems that we're having in America today. For the wag, flag waving, Blue, line, blue Lives Matter crowd, the I'm not wearing a mask, but you shouldn't have an abortion uh, people, for the, for the my guns are more important than your children's lives crowd. They'll do anything they can to hold on to that concept that they are still in power. And if they have to face the reality that they have less power than they once did, which was undeserved then and is undeserved now, um, they're going to act out violently. Um, and some of that violence is going to be in a refusal to engage with the entire process of getting us collectively out of a pandemic. Now, I shared this passage with my friend Amy, and she made a very cogent contact, a comment to me. That she, her comment was, suicide is a form of control. And I completely agree with her in that context. It's absolutely the truth. The knowledge that I had access to suicide at any moment kept me alive. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but the knowledge that I always had an escape button I could punch, and that no matter how bad it got, I could always get out. Let me keep going. So in that context, the knowledge that suicide existed is the reason I'm 57. Otherwise, I would have been gone a long time ago. I, I would have made, made it past 25. But also in this context, this is that reversed. These people are willing to die to kill others. They're willing to die to put their children at risk, their families at risk, their family member, other family members, their neighbors, and their neighbors' children. They're willing to kill other people's children just to 
own the limbs. That's just shown that they're, you know, bootstrappy, we don't need none of that their science crap. And the sad part is, is some of them aren't, you know, hillbillies. And I use that term, not in a derogatory manner, but, you know, let's face it, there is rednecks in this country. Some of them are, are, are the good guys. Remember, there was a time when being a redneck meant you were anti-establishment. Because remember, they didn't much like the cops. But nowadays, being a redneck is often associated with people that are flying the Blue Lives Matter flags. And that's a weird twist. You can see like a lot of, and there were a lot of red caps, a lot of hillbilly folks, they loved to like for NASCAR. Remember how NASCAR started? They were moonshiners. They were not conservatives. <laughs> they were anti-establishment and anti-cop. Okay, they were the good guys. And they were trying to buck the system. They were not trying to play along with it. And somehow that got twisted over the last few few decades. And I'm a little confused by it myself. But it happened. Go check out the liberal neck, uh, redneck on here on YouTube for some really great commentary on that particular topic. Because you can be both of, both those things. Um, you can be uh, died in the world, I love America, at the same time as... I think the establishment needs to be fixed because I can consider myself to be a patriot because I think the system needs to be fixed and I'm going to do what I can to fix it. And I do it by opposing folks in that passage. There are people that I work with who don't care about their lives or their coworkers. They're not going to get vaccinated ever. They only wear masks half on their face walking around with masks like this all day long. Why? Because they don't care. Some of them believe it's a hoax. Some of them believe don't believe in science. And someone owned the libs. And they're willing to die to do it. And they're willing to kill me in the process. I wear a mask to work all goddamn day long. All day long I wear a mask. Run in 400 degree molds. All day long. So when I see people complaining, like, they will have to wear a mask while they're spending 15 minutes in Walmart, I want to smack them upside the head. It's like, just shut up, you idiot. Just wear the damn mask, socially distance. Do your duty as a citizen to help keep others safe, to keep yourself safe. They don't care. Because in this particular situation that we're in, they don't get to be the hero. They don't get to be center stage. They may be willing to, like, you know, grab a rifle and go shoot the enemy, whoever the enemy happens to be. But they're not willing to do it, take a gesture that is about kindness, that is about support, that is about selflessness. You're wearing a mask to keep others safe. They view it as passivity. And they view it as passivity. They view kindness, they view compassion as negatives. Because it doesn't make them the hero. So, I like this passage that I just read. It really does focus a number of things I've been trying to think about myself lately. And my friend Amy's comment that suicide is a form of control is also very relevant. I just don't want these people to take me with them when they've decided they're going to kill themselves. That's why I hate smoking so much. You want to kill yourself, didn't this friggin' do it? Don't, don't take the rest of us with us, with you. Because that's what smoking is. It is suicide. Just don't take me with you in the process. So, yeah. This is the state we're in. People willing to kill themselves and kill their neighbors, all in an attempt to show the liberals that they still have power, they still have control. That's sad. But it's what we're living in. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs>